So we're going to be adding a little SCSS uh, to our SVG that we just incorporated and make it scale down so it's not this giant, enormous screen thingy on the entirety of my screen. But before we can do that, we actually need to uh, initiate or start our SAS watch. So it actually converts our uh, SCSS file into a SCSS file, which the browser can read. So in here, in my Visual Studio code, I open my terminal and it, the hotkey on a Mac is Command J. And then you can do this. The hotkey for Windows is Control J, if I recall, like this. Or if you don't want to do that, you can go to view up here and click the integrated terminal as well. Now what I'm doing next, you of course need to have installed SAS from uh, the SAS uh, environment, so you can do this. But before I actually start it, I need to make sure I'm in the correct library down here in my terminal. So I can just quickly do an LS on a Mac or a DIR on a PC to make sure. And I can see right now I'm in a something called, I can see a folder call first semester. And that's not the correct place I want to be because there's no files here to convert. I need to be in the folder where the file is so I can convert it. What I want to do is just type CD and because I want to do the easy one is I just open in my case Finder or Pathfinder or Explore what it's called in one Windows and I just navigate to the correct folder first semester animation CSS and in here I have my file. I'm just going to click this and drag it down here. So it's going to print out the actual path for me so I don't have to go through and find it and locate. Just going to drag drop it along with the CD in the front and click enter. And now you can see change from work to CSS. And just a quick check, I can see now there are these uh, files in here. Yours will probably only say style.scss and not the others, but they will in a second. So what we're going to do is we're going to start up SAS by just typing SAS, two dashes, dashes and hit watch. So for each time you create a change or click save in your SCSS file, it's going to do things, right? The first thing you want to do is we want to tell it which file am I going to watch for, for changes, right? So this is style.scss and what are we going to print it out to? So when, once a change happens, what file do we want to print it to? So I want to print it to a style.css, which the browser can read. And then you just click enter. Hopefully you says SAS is watching for changes. Uh, and once you do something down here, let's just do a body and add a background color to make sure everything works and it's connected. Let's go red, just go crazy. So a change has happened. Let's see if that does anything to this. Ooh, red, pretty, right? Mm, not really. But anyways, it works. I'm just removing this because it's a, not pretty. So we know that works, right? Now that thing is connected. We have our CSS connected and everything is ready to go. What I really quickly want to do is I want to scale this big green box bar down here. So I'm going to go to my SVG. And again, the reason I divided up in the previous videos is because for me, it's easy to see these specific areas I want to work with. And the first one I want to go into the where it says SVG and just after the XMLNS and before the view box or after, it doesn't really matter. I'm going to add an ID like you would with a standard div block or H h1 blog or whatever you're doing right so here i have an id and i'm going to call it green bar so this id i'm going to be using and this is will be my target or selector for my css so jump back into and remember to save your index file here jump back into your sas here and use hashtag because we create an id paste in the name of your id and we're just going to quickly give this a height of, let's go 100 pixels, just to show you, right? So you can see it actually scales down. Click Save, and a change has happened. Whoop to do, I'm just going to minimize this a little bit because I don't really need it, for now at least. Uh, and hit a Refresh, and now you can see it's scaling down. So now we know we can actually manipulate with our SVG through CSS, through HTML, or we can also just quickly do things here. But I want to use the CSS for this part. So this is kind of the first step we want to do and then the next following steps will be adding a little bit more uh, to this uh, specific SVG and how we can make it interact with other elements on our page.